Hello everyone, today I will be showing you how I made a pick and place machine. Now this video will be part one of two, in which I will show you the build part, as well as most of the components and where to get them. A little disclaimer, as this is not a professional industrial machine, it's just something I made to automate a simple task. I'm also not a professional YouTuber, so please forgive the quality of the video. With that said, let me explain what the machine does and then we will get into the actual build. The end goal of the machine is to make a product box like the ones you see here for something I'm working on. I could have just ordered a few dozen of this, but where's the fun in that? These are made of chipboard or thick cardboard and a printed cover that wraps around it. First, I need to lay down an adhesive material in which I will place the board pieces, but as I will demonstrate here very dramatically, of course, there's room for human error. Later in the series, I will design the part of the machine which fold the edges completing the wrap and forming the basic shape of a box. Here I've used some scrap material just to show you the general idea of what I'm trying to automate. The challenge of making this is aligning all the components by hand, as well as being a little tedious if you need to make many of these. So I decided to automate the process because, well, why not? Once the cover is wrapped, I have half of the box made. Throughout the video, I will give you the name of most of the components, as well as some Amazon links to where you can purchase them if you are in Canada or the US. I'm not sponsored by any of the products listed, but they are affiliate links, so I get a few cents here and there if you do follow the link and purchase from Amazon. I will begin with 2020 aluminum extrusion. As you can see, it's called 2020 because it measures 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. This was a pack of 10 39 inch pieces I got from Amazon. I have done a very basic 3D model of the machine, which will hopefully help me illustrate better the structure of it. Here you can see the main skeleton was built using the entire length of the 39 inch for the top part, which is just a square along with reinforced middle links in which later I will place the pneumatic cylinder. After the top square, I made some 12 inch legs, which were joined by a bottom frame. And that is basically it for the frame. I'll show you some of the basic joints I used, but I won't go through every single one. They're pretty much all the same. For the joints, I used a few components such as these sliding nuts to secure the corner braces. Here, I'm using aluminum profile T-sliding nuts, which as the name suggests, just slide into the channels of the aluminum extrusion. But there are two types, which is very important because they behave very differently. The first type, I will demonstrate with this corner bracket. It simply slides and can move freely within the channel of the aluminum extrusion. Once the screw is tightened, it is fairly secure and it's very rigid. But they do have a major downside, which I found out the hard way, and that is that once something is connected at the end, it cannot be removed. So any changes to the frame require disassembling several joints, which is quite problematic. So I prefer this type, which can be dropped in the channel without having to remove it, by sliding to the end, I purchased this box, which came with three different sizes, M5, M4, and M3, and some matching wrenches for a total of 184 pieces. For the screws, I bought a similar box with various hex socket screws, which came in different sizes as M2, M3, M4, and M5, as well as some matching washers and hex nuts. The easiest way to attach this I found is to partially screw the nuts with the piece you are trying to attach, then place the piece in the aluminum extrusion and slowly turn the screw ensuring the nut does a full 90 degrees turn inside the channel, at which point they are fully secured. If it doesn't turn you will need to restart the process, but if done properly the part will be attached securely. To secure the corners, I then use these three-way corner brackets, which are simply attached with machine screws or sunken head screws like the ones in these brackets. If you need to use these corners, you have to be very careful as it will add 5 millimeters to the end of your design, and you must account for that. 
but they are fairly simple to use and once you pair them up with corner brackets they provide a very sturdy corner to an aluminum frame the next step was to secure the horizontal pneumatic cylinder which I temporarily affixed with zip ties but I will be designing a 3D printed bracket later on in the series this is the cylinder I initially bought for this project which I did not use in the end because you can see it's gigantic but I will use it to show you some of the different measurements and what they mean first the bore size which in this case is two and a half inches then is the stroke which is the length of the full extended piston in this case it's 18 inches and then very importantly is the air fitting port size which will need to determine the size of hose fitting needed for the airlines the cylinder I used for this project is an 18 inch cylinder with a one and a quarter inch bore and a total stroke of 18 inches the air fitting is one eighth of an inch to connect the fittings to the cylinder I'll be using some teflon tape just to prevent some air leaks this fitting matches the one eighth port in the cylinder then it simply screws to one of the ports and is tightened with a wrench I'll do the same for the back port as this is a dual action piston and it does need two ports for two hoses after I attached the cylinder I needed to connect the piston port to the assembly that will hold the pneumatic cylinders which move the vacuum suckers vertically I wasn't 100% sure how I was going to do this but I found these pillow block bearings and ordered one of them that has a 10 millimeter bore which matches the 10 millimeter on the piston end I can use this to secure the threaded end of the piston the reason why these are called pillow blocks is because they have an internal mechanism that moves freely as you can see here I will use this to my advantage as it will prevent small imperfections in my alignment from tearing the machine apart to mount it I will use some M5 screws and then some T-slot nuts as usual this will also allow me to adjust the alignment left and right when I connect it to the cylinder head to connect it to the end of the piston thread I simply tighten the threaded end nut as well as two small screws found on the pillow block that prevent it from sliding out now this part I could have done many different ways I decided to go with 8mm rods uh, mounted to the frame with rod holder brackets as you can see I used two of them two of them are mounted to the front and two are mounted to the middle support bars the carriage will sit directly on top of it and it's attached with linear motion ball bearings uh, which simply slide into the 8mm rod this was a kit that came with a rod uh, it came with ball bearings it came with support mounts as well to mount to the frame I used these brackets and uh, which I tightened with the provided screw these linear rods come in different diameters but I went with 8mm just because it was convenient to buy those I then turn the entire assembly upside down just to simplify my life and give it easier access to the bottom screws which will connect to the bearings to the aluminum extrusion using self torquing nuts once again I only used two out of the four bearing screw ports uh, that should secure it well enough and now to ensure that rails are completely parallel to each other I slide the carriage to the end and if you see a bounce like this or notice some resistance then the rods are not completely parallel they need to be adjusted until the mechanism moves freely to the end of the rods without bounce or without resistance once I adjust it it goes back to the end without bounce and without resistance I then needed to do the same process for the other side to make sure that the other side is also parallel and it doesn't have any resistance to the carriage now that this carriage is secure I need to attach it to the end of the rod assembly I made earlier with a random metal bracket I found 
um, using M5 screws and the self-locking nuts. This is a dual action double rod with a 100 millimeter stroke and this is another one that I had initially planned for this to prevent the wiggle that you see here. But unfortunately I broke the M5 fitting while trying to tighten it. I did it too much and it broke. Lesson learned. So for now I will only use one of them until I can take the broken part out of the fitting. To do that I used two quick connect fittings which have an M5 screw mount and a quarter inch or six millimeter quick hose connection. I then tighten this very very carefully to avoid breaking it and then attach another one to the other port as it is a dual action piston. To attach the cylinder to the aluminum frame I will use M4 screws and partly attach the nuts to the screws to make installing easier. And then install it to the 12 inch crossbar I attached earlier to the rails. And this completes the horizontal movement mechanism with the vertical double rods, which will lower and raise the vacuum sucker cups. They will be attached to the 39 inch bar that will be secured to the double rod end. And now for the vacuum sucker cups, I needed to figure out how to mount them and I had initially thought of 3D printing a bracket but I wanted something made out of metal that I could attach somehow to the rail. And then I remember I had used some of these rail guides earlier, but these were 8 millimeters. So I measured the thread of the assembly, and these are 10 millimeters across. So I bought some new ones, which, lucky enough, they had in 10 millimeters and matched perfectly to my assembly. And now I can be secure with the end nut that comes with the assembly. Once this is secure, I'll be able to attach it to the aluminum extrusion. It was a fairly simple solution, but it worked quite well. And I need that because I need eight of them in the 39 inch assembly here. I partially attach the nuts to each assembly and place each of them 10 inches apart. Once tightened, these were very sturdy and should handle the downboard pressure with their built-in suspension mechanism. Once all of them were mounted, I will need to connect all the airlines to each of the eight vacuum suckers. For the tubing, I'll be using quarter inch thickness to match all my fittings. I used line splitters which I got from a kit of fittings that included all types of connectors and they are extremely simple to use. These are quick connect which you just simply push in and they self lock. They are surprisingly airtight once they are attached. And then to release the hose you just push on the blue cap while pulling the hose and they come apart. Fairly simple. Now that I have all eight mounted and connected to the air splitters, I needed to mount the lowering bar, which I attached to two screws and mounted on the double piston pneumatic cylinders. This is where it would have been nice to have the other one. Um, it would have prevented this wiggle on the bar, but uh, I'll make it work with one. And that's it for the mechanical components of the machine. It can now move horizontally and vertically and has all the vacuum fittings attached to it. I will just finish off connecting all of the hoses by splitting them once again and attaching them with a simple screw to the frame. I will split the hoses one more time to reduce the hose to one going to the actual pneumatic vacuum. I then attach all the hoses to the splitters, which will split it once more, giving me only one line going back to the pneumatic valve. I also attach the hoses to the double rod. 
But for now, this is all the progress I'll leave you with. And on the next video, I will finish the electronics, test it with a simple push button, and then automate it with an Arduino. I'll try installing things such as ultrasonic distance sensors. Also, limit switches will be added, which will tell the Arduino when to lower the carriage when it hits the end of the rails. I will go into detail on how the electronics control air valve manifold work, how to control it with Arduinos, the pneumatic vacuums for the suckers and the relay boards, and also how the air valve controls the speed of the mechanism. I'll also install some lasers because, well, they're cool and I like lasers, so why not? And that's it guys for part one of two. I thank you so much if you made it this far and I hope you learned a thing or two. I hope you tune back for episode two. Until then, I wish you all a wonderful day. Take care.